Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be doing a fish room slash 3D printer room slash garden room update. Uh, yeah, so I got a lot of stuff going down here. I made some changes, moved uh, some barrels around, and actually don't have anything going on over here in these low boys. So we're going to talk about all that, um, try to keep the video under 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and start off with the big change here, the micro green and the uh, hydroponic setup. Now this used to be upstairs, but uh, I just didn't like it in my living area. It's pretty cool to be able to have it in the kitchen and go ahead and, you know, cut micro greens and, you know, add stuff to dinner, you know, to, to meals and, you know, have the garden and stuff growing. It's pretty cool, but again, it's just kind of, it's on the stand here and, uh, well, I just didn't really want it upstairs. So. I went ahead and moved the barrel, which I'll show you guys here in a second, and I went ahead and put at least four trays. I used to run eight uh, different trays of microgreens and have the hydroponics on the bottom here, but I decided I'm gonna be growing some taller plants. Um, I just put these in the other day, like three days ago, a uh, bunch of green beans and stuff like that. So I plan on growing taller plants underneath the LEDs instead of the T5s, and I just wanted to have the additional space. So yeah, four trays is plenty. I mean, this stuff I mean, grows relatively quickly. Again, it's only been a few days. Uh, this is almost ready to harvest. And uh, yeah, so I get a lot of questions about the microgreens. If you guys want a separate video on how I set these up and the trays and getting them started and the hydroponics and all that stuff, let me know. Uh, ATO's kicking on like old time's sake. And lighting and fans and all the kind of stuff that I use to make this happen. Now, uh, I'll make that video if you guys want. Just let me know in the comment section. I know it's fish related, but uh, it's, I mean, it's not fish related, but I figured if you want to see it, I can. Um, also, I'll show you, I can show you the hydroponic, the pH, getting the nutrients right and kind of starting the seedlings. But uh, yeah, let me know. And uh, this is a good spot for it. It's hooked onto the apex and uh, yeah, it's just kind of out of the way. Now I went ahead and moved the barrel over here. I actually I removed the uh, Fido grow out station and I actually put it behind the uh, microgreen. So when I start Fido again, I'll be able to have that. So I figured it worked out pretty good. I had plenty of room here to put this 160 gallon barrel. It's right next to the RODI unit, which works out. So I don't have to run the tube up through the uh, uh, the floorboard or whatever the heck it is, the wood there. So it works out pretty good. Uh, I actually got to make some water. going to change out the DI cartridges real quick. But yeah, it's nice. Um, and unfortunately, I dropped this the other day. I gotta make another one. So I've been using the pliers to get it going, but uh, yeah, just unfortunate. Just dropped it. Yeah, I usually do it once or twice a year. I've been going pretty strong, but yeah, I broke that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for the uh, barrel there. Again, this is for the 160 gallons of RODI, and then I have this 30 gallon here that I actually have tilted at an angle because I was dumping the salt water out. So what I do is I put the uh, water in here based on how many gallon water change I want to do on the system. Uh, I run the pump with the salt, and then when I'm ready to uh, do the water change, I just turn this valve and it dumps back into the system, you know, because all of these are one one system here, the two low boys, the 300, the sump, and the 120 gallon tub there. So yeah, let's go to look at these real quick. Well, they're not on. <laughs> uh, and I'm missing some lights, so let's go ahead and get into that. So right now I went ahead and uh, moved all the coral and everything from these two tanks and I put them uh, in the low bo or in the tub, the tub there. Uh, just because I had plenty of room, I've been selling a ton of coral and I had the room to go ahead and just turn these off for now. Now I am doing some test prints on these uh, special grow out racks. Um, so I'm doing a few test prints on that and I'm probably just gonna fill these low boys up or at least do one side and start growing out some colonies again since I am gonna be here for a little bit longer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just off right now. I mean, I don't need the lights on because there's nothing in there, so there's no reason to waste the electricity. And then speaking of lights, I had two of them missing because, what's up, Ferzinski? Um, two of my lights died, and actually, let me go ahead and rephrase that, three of my lights died. Um, this one up here took a dump the other day. I believe it's blinking red and blue, so it's hardware issue. The other one's just stayed red, so, Yep, got to send those in to get fixed or, you know, I can only imagine how much that's going to cost, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're way past warranty. They've been up for four years now. Yeah, yeah, three or four years, almost five, maybe something like that. I'll have to check and see the timeline, but either way, they're they're past warranty, so I probably just have to buy new lighting, but yeah, so let's go and move over to the 300. The calc stir is still offline. Uh, I got to send in the dose pump to be fixed. Again, it's just another thing I got to send in. Um, and I don't really need it right now because the calcium reactor is taking care of uh, the two tanks right now. Since I have minimal coral, uh, I can just rely on the calcium reactor. I'm assuming once I start uh, 
with more grow out stuff in the tubs there or in the low boys i'll probably have to kick the calf back on to keep up but right for right now the uh, calcium reactor is doing pretty good um chato is for sale by the way i i usually don't do it uh too often probably once every couple months and what's up dude and uh yeah so it's on sale now i gotta empty the refugium basically i just take it out of stock until the refugium is full put it back in stock i usually do like a buy two get one free kind of deal uh just to justify the shipping and uh yeah so i appreciate that if you guys want to support the channel filter socks still using filter socks some of you guys asked me to uh invest into a um the the roller mat but with the way my plumbing is set up i just don't feel like taking it all apart to put a roller mat in so yeah the filter socks are still there and of course they need to be changed per every video i make it seems like they always need to be changed and uh yeah so i'll take care of that after the video um trident going pretty strong now one thing that i do that they say not to do is uh, you guys know when there's just a little bit left in the bottom of this well i always just dump it into one of these containers of course the same color container and uh what's up dude and uh i end up using it every single time so i think it's every six months seven months i get a full container and i just reuse it and i've noted noticed no difference in the uh the reading so i don't know i mean that little bit adds up over time a lot of people say not to do it but i haven't noticed any difference in the readings and uh works out just fine so uh yeah if you want to do it do it i just don't feel right throwing away you know this much at the bottom of the container because it's not not pulling it all out so uh yeah i think that's it for the sump everything is doing pretty good uh, no issues uh, i cleaned it out about a month and a half ago so it's good for now even though it doesn't look the greatest uh, it's definitely good for now uh let's go to move over to the tub here rocking the kessels no issues with those working out pretty good you can see there's some colonies down here uh that big bertha broke off a while ago and uh speaking of the devil there she is her and all her glory just destroying everything uh, as i mentioned during the live stream i'm considering turning this tank into a fish only uh because it's just it's brutal man <laughs> i i just put in little little bitty colonies and she's still i'm just waiting for these to come off uh she's just still just being a dick of a fish uh pretty cool great personality very nice fish but not nice to anything in the tank coral wise other fish and she's not aggressive but yeah back to the tub uh i really like the tubs you guys asked me if i was going to get a couple more at the moment no just because i still haven't decided what i'm going to do with these if, if i don't feel like growing out the uh the coral again in this tub or in these low boys i might just remove this whole section and put in another 20 printers and i mentioned that during the live stream which by the way guys is now monday at 8 p.m eastern standard time notifications go out so if you're following the channel you're going to get that but uh i haven't decided yet i i was uh i don't know i like the low boys to a certain extent i like having the shelving here um but i i need more printers and we'll talk about that here in a second but for right now one of these tubs is pretty good uh, i got my grow out stuff over here the coral over here and uh you know it's, it's it's taking care of business no issues definitely like them i will be using them in the future for sure um we're gonna do a separate video on everything that i dose you guys asked me that to make a video so i'm gonna do that probably uh tomorrow or maybe thursday uh but either way i'll do a separate video on everything i dose and how much uh this is the coral cutting and kind of orders that are holding right now for uh, waiting on filament which by the way has been a little bit of an issue um getting filament in i don't know if it's just supply chain stuff but um a little lower in filament than i usually am but it's not horrible and it's not it's only impacting a couple orders and it's nothing crazy if if there's an issue where i can't get the color that you want i usually reach out and say hey uh, here's the ETA on the, your color filament. Would you like to change colors or do something differently? Um, and a lot of people are like, yeah, just print in black or another color and it's good to go. But uh, I'll keep you guys in a loop. Uh, you can see that there is uh, some printers missing. One, two, three. Uh, I just got to, uh, well, this one's upstairs, so it doesn't count. So these two right here, I just need to clean out the hot end, which I'll do tomorrow. And they're good to go. Other than that, everything is running fine. No issues. Um, the mess per usual. These eight are doing pretty good. Uh, the very first printer I ever owned, <laughs> that's where it all started right there. And uh, yeah, these eight are doing fine, no issues again. Uh, as I mentioned in the live stream last night, I am going to be moving over to Mark III, uh, Prusa Mark III's, and then making my own upgrades based on those, uh, that platform. Uh, I'm still gonna keep these, um, these Ender 3 frames, and uh, you know, they're fully automated, all upgraded, everything's good, they still work. I'm just looking for something a little bit better quality and uh, less maintenance, because maintenance is something that when you have one or two printers, it's fine. 
when you have 22 it's like okay well I need I, I can't I don't really necessarily enjoy that and if I have 40 or 50 it, it becomes a problem so I'm just gonna be going to a little bit better quality printer and uh, again I'm still gonna do my upgrades my Raspberry Pis and all sorts of stuff to them to make them kind of how I want them to be just like these but uh, yeah some of you guys were asking why do I have plastic here uh, two reasons one it keeps the heat in which the heat is good for the printing and two it vents out all the fumes from the PLA and the PETG or the PETG um, now there's a lot of debate out there if it's toxic or it's good to breathe in listen I I don't take any chances of that stuff I vent all that out boom 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 and I got three massive holes in that door and uh, I vent everything out so we have three or four fans total yeah we have four fans total in here exhaust fans and the humidity if you guys are wondering stays at uh, constantly uh, like what 30 this thing almost, woo, almost never kicks on um, 30 percent there which is pretty good let me see if i can fix my gimbal before it goes crazy and we're back okay cool uh so 30 percent 30 to 40 percent is pretty much what it stays in here all year long because again there's four massive fans in here just pulling out all the air and then i have central air coming down which uh you know puts cold or fresh air into here and it just kind of you know it's probably not the greatest for my heating bill but it's as long as it stays nice down here I'm not really worried about it too much, but uh, yeah, general mess, usual stuff. I sweep this every day. It just, it is the way it is. Um, I got this. I got my thing out of storage here, my back thing here. Uh, it's been getting, we're getting slammed pretty hard in uh, BJJ, so I was like, yeah, I think I need to kind of uh, pull my neck a little bit and my back. So I've been hanging from this thing. I've had it for a few years. Uh, yeah, it works pretty good. Uh, and then yeah, my pot there. That's my that's my lobster pot. You know, when I'm living large <laughs> so uh, you can see my filament store uh, stockpile is three left so yeah it's just the way it is right now um, hopefully uh, things kind of get better when it comes to filament and just getting getting stuff in general I mean even parts at, at the moment is just kind of not fun so when I'm able to get stuff I usually buy quite a bit of it because I don't know when I'm gonna get it again and uh, that's just kind of the way things are with business right now other than that uh yeah i think that's it that's my dog I told you guys i got a cat she's upstairs um what's up that's that's, that's axel see what's up dude that's his deer bone um i might put a picture up but i usually save the uh the the bones like the legs of the whatever deer i harvest and this year i had two so i had a eight you know bones and whatever fat cartilage and whatever meat left on there and he I give him one probably uh, one or two a month and he just kind of goes to town on him and gets all the bone marrow out and he actually eats a pretty good amount of the bone as well but yeah so he's getting fat and he's about to lose his nuts next month too so that's that's gonna be fun anyways guys <laughs> yeah uh, okay under 15 minutes we're good we're good so anyways guys I'm gonna get back to work I have a whole bunch of coral going out today uh, as I mentioned before there was some really low temperatures over the last couple weeks and I haven't been able to ship coral uh, because like I said I refuse to ship when it's sub 20 degrees because it doesn't really matter what kind of heat packs you got um, usually don't do very well in that so you want to say bye so what's up see ya okay anyways there goes my gimbal again okay I guess we're we're going at this angle <laughs> no all right, cool. Well, that's it, guys. Hopefully, uh, you know, you guys have a good week. I will put a couple more videos out, and I will see you next Monday for the live stream. All right? Peace.